Good morning. Still, it is still Saturday, July 23rd, 2022. And this is going to be a part two of a show that we just did a little uh, few minutes ago uh, regarding Kerry Mullis, the PCR test, and the lack of uh, recognition by the general public. Uh, that it was Dr. Joshua Lederberg who helped bring the PCR test to market that really helped discover it and helped discover its value, even though uh, Dr. Kerry Mullis thought of it in the middle of the night. One of those uh, fell off the toilet, uh, came up with the uh, the flux capacitor, back to the future kind of uh, moments, I suppose. No one is uh, questioning if Mullis thought of the PCR test. But... Previously, we talked about that we reviewed uh, Carrie Mullis's uh, Scientific American, April 1990 article, The Unusual Origin of the, of the uh, Polymerase uh, Chain Reaction, and how most people missed the last page, where he says no one saw this, his idea, and it wasn't getting anywhere, and it was only at this internal event in Tacitus Corporation where Dr. Joshua Lederberg uh, discovered his idea. He saw the poster board, the two struck up a conversation, and then one thing led to the next. Now, it didn't really uh, uh, hit me the fir- in the first episode that we did what this could mean. And, and, what, and what this is, is when he describes, finally, I noticed Dr. Joshua Lederberg, president of the Rockefeller University nearby. I snared him looking at my results. Now, what he doesn't say is Lederberg worked at Cetus, but Cetus Corporation many consider to be the first true biotech company out there. And Lederberg was a key advisor, consultant from the very start of the company. Lederberg is one of the most important people in the history of Cetus. He was really like their lead consultant. Right up there with Peter Farley, uh, Ronald Cape, Stanley Cohen, etc. Steven Rosenberg. Lederberg was the key advisor consultant really like running the board, the scientific board of the company. And when Mullis is presenting his idea at this fair and Lederberg uh, strolls by and discovers it, Mullis only mentions Lederberg as the president of the Rockefeller. Now, I just know that Mullis did not actually overlook the fact that Lederberg had worked at Cetus. In fact, we're at an internal Cetus event. Why is Lederberg even there? Usually, these events don't welcome outsiders too, uh, too easily because of intellectual property concerns. Somehow or another, Mullis forgets to mention that. He just describes Lederberg as the president of the Rockefeller University, which he was. In, uh, in this, uh, again, this event is in 1984. He was. I'm not sure if Lederberg was still a key advisor to Cetus at that time. I think he actually was, though. Since this article was written in 1990, Mullis had six years after 1984 to discover that Lederberg was a founding member of Cetus, and he doesn't mention it. Now, that is a, that is a horrific oversight. Or, if you want to be conspiratorial, if you want to be conspiratorial about it, that means that Mullis does not want people to know that. He's hiding that fact. And it could be because Lederberg used Kerry Mullis to, to get the PCR technology out there because Lederberg didn't want to be involved in it. Well, why would Lederberg want to be disconnected from the PCR test? This is the, uh, the genome.gov. The PCR, once amplified, the DNA produced by the PCR can be used for many different laboratory procedures. Most mapping techniques in the Human Genome Project relied on PCR. Most of the Human Genome Project relied on this test. The Human Genome Project was just being kicked off. It didn't officially get rolling until the 90s, but the concept of it was building in the 1980s, and the person who was leading that was Lederberg. As so as Lederberg is developing the out the, the construct uh, of the abstract of what will become officially the Human Genome Project. He's sort of getting universities aligned at that time. He just happened to stumble into Kerry Mullis, who thought of the most important component of the human genome test, the PCR. 
and Mullis can't remember where he thought of it. He just he thought of it in the middle of the night, and that was his big idea. Well, that's totally possible. I certainly can't disprove it. But it's a little odd. And later, Berg finds it just at the moment he needs it. Now, keep in mind, what's Lederberg at? What other connections does Lederberg have at this time? Well, as the president of the Rockefeller University and still deeply connected with Cetus Corporation, he's on a first name basis with Ronald Reagan. Look, this is 19. Uh, matter of fact, this is uh, 1985. So literally, like just like a, a couple of months after Lederberg discovers the test, he's sitting next to Ronald Reagan. This isn't just some college professor who, you know, is fishing on the weekends, you know, mowing his lawn, etc. This is one of the most influential people on the planet at this time. And Carrie Mullis doesn't mention this. I can't disprove what Carrie Mullis is saying, but it is it is a it is absurd that he did not know this, that Mullis omitted this fact. And at the same time, that Carrie Mullis says that Lederberg strolls on by and discovers the PCR test uh, that, that uh, Mullis is working so hard to demonstrate at this uh, fair for Cetus Corporation. At that same time, Lederberg's best friend, David Hamburg, over at the Carnegie Institute, other side of the street, right, is working directly with the government of, the, of what is uh, going to become the old Soviet Union as it's crumbling and leading the efforts to denuclearize, to remove nuclear weapons from the planet. Lederberg's best friend, David Hamburg, is going to start, initiate the Noon Luger program. And you know how the Noon Luger program ultimately becomes concerns about biological weapons, which then ties right into anthrax, which then brings us right back to where we are today. Oh, oh, yes. And, and and this is 1984. Remember, Lederberg at this time, he's working directly with Margaret Thatcher. He knows all of the, the presidents of the Rockefeller University. He signed the Biological Weapons Convention in 1969. Kerry Mullis didn't know this. He didn't know any of that. Oh, yes. And starting in the late 1970s, uh, Lederberg is a uh, is really the mentor for his best friend's daughter, his best friend, again, David Hamburg over at the Carnegie, working directly with the Russian government, first name basis, Gorbachev, Yeltsin, everyone else, right? Uh, Hamburg's daughter, Peggy Hamburg. Peggy Hamburg. Lederberg wrote Peggy Hamburg, Margaret Hamburg's letter for Duke University to get her in. Now, she probably would have gotten in anyways. Seems like a mere formality at that point. Uh, but it, when, when Lederberg shows up on the Charlie Rhodes show, in the late 1990s, he shows up with Margaret Hamburg. And that Margaret Hamburg became the FDA director under Obama for seven years and made all of these emergency use authorizations possible. And that Margaret Hamburg then became the director of the biological weapons component of the Nuclear Threat Initiative and even oversaw the monkeypox exercises of last year, predicting the exact date of the monkeypox outbreak on planet Earth of this year. We don't have hard evidence that Kerry Mullis didn't know this. However, it, is, it really is hard to believe that if you could think of the PCR test, the most important test of the Human Genome Project, it just came at you in the middle of the night. It's your big idea. And then, you know, the guy comes by, walks us in, Lederberg. First of all, I don't even know how you could talk to Lederberg. There there'd be, it should be like a mob around him. He just walks up the table and you start talking. And you don't know that he used to work. He, he was the lead scientific director, consultant for your own company. You don't know that. You Maybe you didn't know that in 84, but you didn't include that in your paper in 1990 talking about the PCR. The signs are there that Kerry Mullis did not invent the PCR test. The signs are there that would suggest that Kerry Mullis was used to wash this technology and to separate it somehow from Lederberg or some other component because it was needed urgently at that time for the Human Genome Project. That is, that is what this looks like, everyone. Again, that is speculation. That's just speculation. But there's... I, but... The data suggests that. 
here I am potentially throwing shade on a hero and the world needs heroes right now. Actually, the world doesn't need heroes. You have all the heroes you already need and you know it. You just don't want to admit it. So that said, how on earth did Carrie Mullis not mention that Lederberg worked at Cetus, that Lederberg was working with the president, that Lederberg's best friend is starting what's going to become removing nuclear weapons from the Soviet Union and the New Lugar program, the Carnegie Institute. That's it, everyone. That's it. I hope you have an awesome, awesome, awesome weekend. Your job today is to make somebody smile. Make somebody smile. You know what? If they're a stranger, better still. All right. That's all, everyone. God bless.